So another package came in and I bought this for 220 euros shipped. Let's take a look. Oh, that is one. Shitty packaging job. Yes, things all over the place. So we have a mouse. Pretty heavy. And I found this, and this could be part of a mouse. Not sure. Could just be a nail. I have no idea. Uh, it looks more like a nail, I think. We have. Uh, power supply and by the way that came just like this. I just opened the lid and this is how it was packaged Which is uh, a bit discouraging Because we have This right here and that is uh, a Very snug fit for this package. I hope the case is intact because also couldn't be Yeah, seems to be seems to be okay. So this is another a1200. It's a bit wobbly. I don't know why. Oh, the screws have been. Uh, now this thing has been opened and it's very, very dirty. I don't know if you can see that. And it's an A1200 HD40 with, with a 40 gig hard disk. Let's open the lid and see what we have there with my very special professional tool. And we have nothing, which is a bit of a shame, except for one very dirty. This is probably the first time that one of these lids is lighter on the outside than on the inside, oh, and it's really dirty. Okay. So let's open her up and take a look inside. I'm, I have no idea if uh, it's actually sealed. Look at that. It's made in the UK and it's a sealed A1200. I wonder what happens if I just plug it in. Screws are all pretty loose. And they are not Phillips head, at least not here. Hmm, not sure what's going on here. It's a sealed machine, but the, the screws have clearly been removed. Okay, got sys info boot. Let's put it in here so it doesn't boot from hard disk. Let's start the machine. It's booting from disk. Hmm. It's booting from disk, but nothing on the screen. Okay, that seems to be, I don't know, a cap problem? Might be. Okay, so let's go and open up. Yeah, did take out all the screws except for the one beneath the seal. Trying to get the seal up, but it's not. Ah, who cares? There's actually a Phillips head screw under there. Hmm. So it's an interesting mix of screws here, I just don't understand why. See what we got. Let me show you. Oh, 
How can something be that dirty from the inside while being almost okay from the outside? I don't get it. So that's a lot of dust. Let me show you this here. This is just crazy. Yeah, the caps look pretty shocking, I think. Hmm, but it's all still factory, so that is nice for a change. But I will really have to get this all out of here and whew, another nice restoration job. Another box came in with stuff and it smells of attic. So let's uh, take a look. I will put this box down and we will take a look piece by piece, but it's a big box, so be prepared. First up we have Amiga tools. Never seen this. Seems to be a legit collection from 1994. Disk tools, printer tools, DTP tools, CD tools, CAD tools. Yeah, so this is not sure if this is shareware actually, but it's some kind of tools. Nice. We have a super jewel box and it contains chip 07. Chip was a, was a popular German computer magazine. Not very good, but still popular. So that is that. We have Windows 95 quick tips. Okay little booklet. Nice. We have Amiga Workbench. This is, I assume, for Workbench 2. Yeah, it's Workbench 2. No idea with which machine this came. Could be the A500 Plus or the A600. Or even the A3000, but I think the 3000 had this binder. And then we have <laughs> uh, yeah games for women interesting um, yeah ah it says games for women but women seems to be some kind of women's magazine and that is what this is it's a CD that was uh, assembled by women's magazine or woman magazine interesting then we have amigo s 3.1 dos the dos book interesting i was looking for one of these books on dos 3.1 yeah looks good i assume this came with the a1200 it doesn't say we have, oh, the AREX book for 3.1. Never used uh, AREX. If you have, leave a comment. I'm interested in uh, if this makes any sense on the Amiga. We have the 1084S color monitors user's guide. By the way, I paid, I think, 25 for all this. We have Diavolo backup. The devilish good backup program for the Amiga. Never heard of this. Then we have a game by Interplay, which is Descent. Not sure if it's in. Oh, it's in here. That's awesome. But no manual. So this is what it looks like. I think this game actually was a thing back then. But this is a PC version, not the Amiga version. So it's a Misumi keyboard and it was painted, spray painted from one side, or at least it was stored somewhere where someone painted. It's a PS2 one. It seems to work. 
we have a few discs. These look brand new. Oh no, there's something on there. At least they are numbered. 42 to 46. Backup number four, games. Amiga. Oh, okay. We have more CDs. We have the ATI Catalyst for Win XP. Okay. This is a graphics card driver, I think. We have Aminet 5 of March 95. It's actually in here. We have Digimax S500, S600. Oh, this is some driver for, uh, for a camera. I have more discs. Yay. I only have a million discs. These are also numbered, but not labeled. These are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 discs. So someone seems to be reluctant to disc boxes and just uses these. We have ooh, Introduction to Windows 95, the official Windows 95 book. Ooh, this is fancy. Nice. We have PCs for kids and the whole family. Window uh, with Windows, um, write, draw, paint, in color, step by step. Oh yeah, that is in color indeed. Okay, nice. But this is for Windows 3.1 and not the 95 version, as you can see. We have, of course, more disks, because why not? And again, numbered, not labeled. Why? <laughs> okay, never mind. Ooh, this is one of these fancy joysticks. All micro switched and creaky. Yeah, fully micro switched. And switches and. Yeah, there's a little life left in this, but. Just a little, and I think the display is broken. Slow, fast, and you can use it for CPC and Atari and C64. Yeah, that was quite a joy. Oh, what do we have here? Maurizio Gaudino from the World Soccer World Championship 94. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so this joystick is a monster. We have another book. It's the Octagon Manual. Okay, this is uh, the manual. Oh, here we have the original owner. This is the manual for an octagon controller, I think, for the Amiga, which is a hard disk controller and memory card, if you are lucky. We have more books. Word 7 for Windows 95. Wow, that is uh, quite the 95 collection here. We have Amiga DOS 1.3. Includes workbench and extras. Oh, for the A1000. So this is uh, an add-on you had to buy, actually. Nice. We have another workbench 3.1. Oh no, this is the DOS 3.1. I have the, the DOS 3.1. Oh, this is already coming apart. Good cheapo books. We have a power supply, and this is an A500, A600 power supply. In very nice condition. It's just a bit dirty, but it's not too yellowed, and the cable is very nice. So if this works, oh, it's a 3 amp version. I've never seen one that looks like this, with this top cover, I think. Hmm. This might actually be the A the A600 one or an intermediate one between different revisions. Okay, take it. We have a my PC folder. So this was, uh, I assume, one of these collections where you buy the first one which has the folder, and then you every month you get more pages and pay a horrendous amount of money for that. We have a book inside, which is Word 7 for Windows 95. 
And here are the pages. PC, email. Yeah, it seems someone just bought the first issue, so the folder, and no, nothing more because this is empty, almost. We have these speakers, which look very 90. Way around. Let's try these. I could use my iPad for that. Yeah, it works. Nice. Very good. A bit cracky on the dials here, but um, nothing that um, the Oxid can't fix. So this is good. Nice, nice boxes. Almost no yellowing. Cool. So by the way, this is a Atari song I made using AI. So if you haven't heard it, just check it out. It's uh, one of the last videos. And here we have a disk box. Yay! Finally, Technocop, A Train, Jurassic Park, Pirates, Stunt Car Racer. Not sure if this is Amiga or PC stuff. Microsoft Word Trainer for Win Word 6.0. I wrote a book like this back in the day. Interesting. We have introduction to Amiga to the Amiga 600. So this workbench book was for the A600. We have Daily Thompson's Olympic Challenge manual, and we have, I think, instructions for games. We have Gunship, Christoph Columbus, Bundesliga manager Hattrick, football simulation, and that is pretty much all there is in here. And a lot of dirt and dust and shit. And finally, we have another disc box. This time it's a five and a quarter inch Astro Chase, Sly Spy, Red Baron, Desert Strike, Sim City 2. Super Pac-Man, Mega Ball, Pac-Man, Columbus, Amiga Bridgeboard PC install. Oh, that is interesting. Directory Opus. Wait, these are Amiga disks. Kickstart 2.0. Xcopy. Interesting. Xcopy. So someone actually used a five and a quarter inch disk drive. Cool. Yeah, so that is pretty much all there is in this box, which is a nice box. And for 25 euros, I can't complain because I get speakers, keyboard, joystick, power supply, discs, books, a decent game, some Amiga manuals. So I'm pretty happy. So just when I was about to finish up, there came another package and that is packed with PC parts. So the first one being ATI Rage 128 Pro 32 Max AGP card. That's the first part. Then we have this board right here, which is a bit bent, I think. Oh no, it's a clamp down here. So there's a CPU clamp. That seems to be a more recent board because it has PCI slots and stuff. I have no idea what kind of CPU is on here. Oh yeah, that's professional, professionally made. Just held in by a clip, uh, a zip tie. That's great. 
<laughs> that's very ghetto. It's just cut out here to fit. Okay, interesting construction. I have no idea what it is. No info whatsoever, but whoa, look at this. That's some bent board. Yeah, so this seems to be one of these in the middle boards um, where you ha still have VGA and PS2 and parallel and serial, but you also have USB and built in audio. So we have all the connections here for IDE and floppy. So this is, this is pretty much a sweet spot board, I would say. It has some RAM. Let's check what it is. And that is 512 megabytes of DDR400 megahertz CL3 RAM. Let's check out the next board we have, which is this one right here. And this has some standoff on here. So what do we have here? I have, again, no idea. Ah, it says K6XV3 plus 66. And it is an AMD K6 2. Ooh, that's interesting. This is some nicely laid out pin headers. Key lock, speaker, reset, whatever, LEDs. All nice and simple to connect. I like that. Also two IDEs. One floppy port. Yeah, this looks like a nice board. And it has an award BIOS on it. And it has dip switches, which, well, we might have to look that up. No sign of who made this. Hmm. Okay. Let's put this over here. Oh, this is one broken uh, hard disk tray construction. We can pull out the hard disk. But this is not for an IDE hard disk, but for a SCSI hard disk. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So you mount this into your case, uh, your PC case, and you can uh, lock it up so that no one can take the thingy out, or oh, I can see this actually has burn marks on the resistor, so I think this is not good anymore. It's a little fan and this header here, which then connects to this header here. And you can just plug it in and you put your disk, your hard disk in here. At least I get um, a SCSI cable, a short one out of here, and some connectors and some LEDs and some fans and some stuff. So I'm not unhappy. Ah, by the way, I paid, I think, 10 euros for all of this, what you see now in a minute. So second box, these boards, all the stuff you see here, 10 bucks. Plus, I think, 6 euros shipping. So that is what it is. Let's put this to the side. Next up, we have this, and this announces itself as a power supply. And it's a 350 watts, oh, which is not bad. But no idea, <laughs> no description. Ah, here's a description. Model LPT2. Yeah, so it does give minus 5 volts, which is nice. Yeah, it looks like a power supply. No idea if it works. Next up, we have what seems to be another power supply. Yeah, that is a dirty boy. And this has exactly the bare minimum of connections, which is <laughs> these. And this also looks like a classic power supply and it's, it's an enhanced 230 watt power supply ATX. No idea if it works. We will see. Next up we have a disk drive and this is a Sony disk drive. Oh, nice. I like Sony disk drives because, well, they invented the three and a half inch disk drive, so why not? And it's from November 2005 and it's an MPF 920. I have to see if I can mod this to be an Amiga drive, but it should work. 
Most drives can be modded to be Amiga drives, most PC drives. We have this light on DVD ROM, which has a play button and a forward button, which is nice, like that. And this is an ID drive. I just bought one for a build. But okay, if it works, it works. We will see. Next up, we have this 52 times max uh, CD ROM drive, which is from December 2003. And this is by BTC. No idea. And it's also an IDE drive. Then we have DVD ROM. This is also a writer, and this is by HL Data Storage, model 6CC4482B from July 2005. We have, oh man, this is a lot of drives. This is a nondescript model CD322 from February of 1998. Then we have another light on, 84. 32x uh, recordable rewritable from August 2000 so this is the most recent drive now and it's a model LTR 0841 and this is also an IDE we have some slot covers some cable which is an IDE cable and an IDE cable we have another one of these slot-in thingies for your drive. Which I'm holding the wrong way around. And this is, I think, just an IDE one. So this one looks to be in much better condition. Ooh, and it has this fancy, it's not just straight, it's like plug it into something. And you have these nice pull thingies here. Okay, so this is all that came in these boxes. Um, let's test out some motherboards, shall we? So I just wanted to test this board, but I just noticed I don't have the correct memory. I have lots of sticks for this board over here, but none for this here. So that's a pity. Uh, let's switch boards. So we will first try the memory stick which is in here. We need a graphics card or do we? I mean it has a VGA out so maybe it actually does output something. The bending is a bit... Uh, well I'm not sure if this actually works. Let's see. Let's use one of the power supplies that came with the boards. I will take the 350 version. Uh, even though it has a little burn mark on top, but let's let's just hope that's nothing. It's nothing. It's, I'm sure it's nothing. I'm very sure it's nothing at all. So this should at least post, I think. Uh, we need a power button. Just realized. Yeah, I will just uh, short these two pins over here and hope for the best. So I did plug in the power supply. I'm still alive, so that is a good sign plug this in here and now we have to short this thing here, these two pins for the power switch and I made this little thing out of a cut off connector and just twisted the cables together so this should give us some power hopefully. Let's see. And it does, starts up, hmm, not much on the screen so far. No beep, no nothing. Oh, okay, it started, so, um, hmm. It's just running, but there's nothing on the screen. Ah, I see. So for this to work, we have, of course, to connect the CPU power. Let's plug that in, that might help. So we are set up, I will take this, plug this on here once, and hope for the best. Oh, <laughs> it's booting. Fujitsu Siemens Pentium 4. Uh, so booting is a big word because there's no drive attached. But still. 
and the journey ends here. Okay, I think we should attach at least a floppy drive and see if that changes things. Okay, so we have a P4 motherboard. Oh, and it's getting it's getting toasty here already, so we have to attach the fan again. Um, yeah, nice. So that board at least gets to something. It's not completely dead. Let me stop that. Okay, I attached the uh, three and a half inch Sony drive from the package. I have my Toshiba MS-DOS version 4.0 discs here. Plug it in. Uh, connect the fan, connected a hard drive cable, but not a hard drive. Let's uh, go again. Could be that it needs a keyboard attached, which I don't have yet. Nothing here. No light, no nothing. I assume it needs a keyboard. So let me grab a keyboard. Okay, keyboard attached, PS2. So since I do not have any suitable PCI graphics card, let's check this one right here. Do we get anything? Ah, okay, Fujitsu's back. So the graphic card seems to work. Let's maybe try to, ah, uh, I'm in the setup. That's good. So we have a setup, which is nice. Uh, and that is when I find out that the enter key is dead. <laughs> okay, IDE drive. Okay, save and exit. Let's let's see what it does. So I'm using this enter key here instead of this. Ah, now it blinked and the floppy goes. At least it seeked it for a second. Hmm. And blackout. Ah! It's booting. Oh, boot disk failure. Not sure if this disk drive is good. Okay, so I would say this system just works. It's just the disk drive that's failing me. I don't have another one, don't I? Wait. I have another one. Let me check that one. The drives have been switched to an Epson. I'm not sure if I did the Amiga mod on this one. Did not seek, which is not a good sign. Uh, maybe it lost its setup because the battery is empty. That could be. Yeah, lost all the settings. Nice. Okay, I did try to boot with another disk, but I think this drive is either toast Oh, I converted it to Amiga and I don't have another drive, so yeah, out of luck here. So in the end I used my USB disk drive and there was actually an option in the, in the setup. And now I'm booted into my DOS installer disk, so yeah, all good. I upped my game on the power and reset button, I actually have one now. Yeah, so this seems to be a Pentium 4 socket 775 board. So now really until next time. Shirio. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.